I wonder, have you ever heard of Kintsuchi? Well, my Japanese isn't up to scratch. But Kintsuchi is a form of pottery restoration used in Japan. Repairers use gold to repair broken pots. The gold is used to highlight the pot's brokenness. Me? I just throw broken pots away because they're worthless, but not the Kintsuchi potters. Once this pottery has been restored in the Kintsuchi way, the pot is often considered to look more beautiful and worth more than when it was first bought. The repairs show off the brokenness rather than hiding it. This sounds a little like the economy in the kingdom of heaven. The broken are the most valuable. It is Mark chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 that we are going to be looking at this morning. So please, would you have your Bibles open? I'm sure it will be very helpful for you as I continue to speak. But first, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you speak to us through your word today. We come to you with hearts and ears open. May we hear clearly so that we discover something fresh and new about your glory today. Amen. The man who is paralyzed. Wow, he's blessed, isn't he? But why would I say such a ridiculous statement? Well, firstly, let's take a look at what Jesus said about the people in Capernaum. From Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, starting at the 23rd verse, we read, And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than it is for you. The crowds have been turning up in their droves to listen to the words of Jesus. He cannot go anywhere without being surrounded by hordes of people. People who seem to be taking in his message of salvation. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Even after hearing the best preacher with the best news, after observing the miracles that they will never see the like again, few are following Jesus. Few will be saved. It will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for Sodom than it will be for the people of Capernaum. These are the words of Jesus. Placed on a mat, brought into the crowds of hundreds of people in the hope of what exactly? You can't get into the house where he is because the crowd is so large. But that doesn't stop the men who are doing the carrying. They find a different way to get to see Jesus. They weren't going to give up. They were going to find a way to get their paralyzed friend to see Jesus. 
so okay they can't get near the door. So they go up to the roof and dig a hole and lower him down virtually into the lap of Jesus. And we read that when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Well, who said anything about this man being carried to Jesus to get his sins forgiven? Surely he's, he's coming to see Jesus because he is sick to the back teeth of being paralyzed. He's sick of his affliction, making him of less worth than the dirt on the base of your shoes. No, no one has said anything about him needing his sins forgiven. Because the men who were doing the carrying were so utterly confident that Jesus is the one that can help their friend, Jesus heals When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. But surely even these men were taking the man to get his physical disability healed. Probably they had no thought about his sins So why? Why does Jesus' thoughts turn to sin? Well, of course, Jesus' real uh, concern is for the man's sins. And he he knows that these sins need to be exposed. These sins are uh, bringing the man to suffer because his suffering is rooted in his separation from God. Jesus is making an astonishing statement here. Son, your sins are forgiven. And I am the one who can forgive those sins. I am not merely the one who can perform miracles. No, son, your sins are forgiven. And later to prove that he has dealt with the man's uh, problems, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. The greatest need for the man was not his physical healing. So much more than that, he needed his sins to be forgiven. He needed to be brought back into a relationship with God. Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God? Little do the Pharisees know that they are spot on. It is only God who can forgive sins. Son, your your sins are forgiven. Jesus is claiming to be God, isn't he? But you know, you know, Jesus' ministry of healing, that is a wonderful mission. Healing the sick. Why did Jesus jeopardize his ministry of healing by doing other things? Couldn't he have left, left the religious stuff alone? No. No, of course he couldn't. Jesus came not to save the people from their physical sickness. He came to save people from their sins. Whatever the cost was to himself, this was the reason for his ministry. 
what Jesus is claiming is right. He is the only one who can forgive sins because he is God. Hearing the gospel message is enough to bring people to the point of giving their life to Jesus. That's what we hope for, isn't it? But if that is what we think, then we have forgotten the power of sin over our lives. How many people do you know that have heard the gospel? Your family, your friends, those who have joined us here for Christmas, for Easter, for remembrance services. Those who have been part of this congregation for years, they've heard the gospel message, haven't they? But they are not in church to hear the good news of Jesus this morning or any other Sunday morning. We have been reading of crowds of people coming to hear Jesus. No city in Palestine appears to have enjoyed so much of our Lord's presence as the people of Capernaum. Jesus performed many of his miracles, spoke many of his sermons there. But yet it seems that his words, his miracles, even his presence had little effect on the hearts of the people of Capernaum. So we must conclude the gospel can set fire the fire of faith in one man's heart, but can also harden another's. The people, they were astonished at Jesus' miracles, but they were not convinced of his message. They remain unconverted and so dead to their sins. The friends who took the paralytic man overcame all the obstacles to bring him to Jesus in order for him to be healed. Immediately, we see that Jesus grants him health and strength. He now stands before Jesus spiritually healed and physically healthy. How blessed this man was to be crippled. Because without this incident in his life, he may well have been just another one in the crowd listening but not hearing. Just another one in the crowd staring at Jesus but not seeing. He may well have been just another one in the crowd that will die ignorant. So indeed, being paralyzed was a blessing for this man. It takes four men to carry this weak, afflicted, dependent man to Jesus. And it takes the words of one man to be healed. Son, your sins are forgiven. I think we've all heard these stories before, haven't we? Bereavements have brought people to seek out the Lord Jesus. Sickness has led people to cry out to him. Foolishness has taught people to pray. Every sickness, every sorrow, every trial is a message from God. And it is meant 
to call us closer to him. In the time of this writing, sin and sickness were inseparably linked. In other words, those who were sick had sinned. Any human claim to forgive those sins were blaspheming against God. They were insulting God and the penalty for this was death. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. Or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. There is no possible way to know that the man's sins have been forgiven. That's true, isn't it? I can say the same to you. Your sins are forgiven. But there's no evidence, is there? So what Jesus is doing is giving the evidence that he is the one who can forgive sins. What is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or take up your mat and walk. Anyone can say your sins are forgiven. But this is completely uncheckable. Take up your mat and walk. When the man does, that's the evidence. Evidence that the man picked up his mat and walked out in full view of everyone. So what Jesus is saying is, your belief is that sin and sickness are linked. Man cannot be cured of his sickness until he is forgiven his sins. So watch, says Jesus. Get up, take your mat and walk. The man is cured. The teachers of the law have been caught out here. By their own beliefs, the man could not be cured unless he was forgiven. He picked up his mat. He is cured, so he must have been forgiven to be cured. Jesus' claim to be the forgiver must be true because he has healed the physical But one other thing is true here. Jesus has just signed his death warrant. No man on earth, no minister can take away our conscience which is loaded with guilt and give us peace. We may declare to each other with authority, your sins are forgiven, but this will not give us true peace. To gain true peace from forgiveness of sins, you must come to the Son, Jesus Christ. 
We must come to him with the same determination, the same eagerness shown by the paralyzed man's friends. We must allow no obstacle to keep us away from coming to the side of Jesus. It is him that is our great high priest. It is him that we go to to have our sins forgiven. Without Jesus, there is no peace. Jesus is who we need to forgive us and to save us. Have you asked Jesus for forgiveness? Do we know the Lord Jesus to be our God? If not, why not? Jesus has literally bought the men and women of God forgiveness. Jesus has shown the perfect attitude of God to all his people. He could say, I forgive, because in him, God was saying, I forgive. Have you asked Jesus for forgiveness? If not, why not? Perhaps today is the day when you come to God afresh and ask him into your life. Perhaps today is the day when you repent of your sins and ask him for forgiveness. Because when you do, you can be fully confident that you are forgiven.